Proposition 25. Referendum on law that replaced money bail with system based on public safety and flight risk. Plain language? Eliminate cash bail and instead allow judges to make a determination about whether an individual is a public safety risk or flight risk and release them or not release them before trial accordingly. The background. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but when you are arrested and you are going to trial for the crime you are accused of, there is a period before the trial and during the trial where certain legalities occur. For the sake of this explanation, let's assume that you, the listener, committed a crime. Let's say that you knocked some punk upside his head and now you've been arrested. The first proceeding is the arraignment. That's where you go to court and the judge will tell you what charges are being filed against you. In your case, you are being charged with knocking that punk upside his head. You will also be assigned an attorney if you need one. Before, during, and after this part of your criminal adventure, you will be in county jail. The sheriff running the jail can decide whether to release you to stay at home or whatever during this process, or the sheriff can choose to put you in jail. Now, under the California Constitution, people arrested and placed into county jail have the right to release before trial, except for certain felonies. But since you just knocked that punk upside his head, you're probably okay. The next thing the judge must do is decide whether the conditions of your case make you a good candidate for release and under what circumstances. The law states that the judge must consider the seriousness of your crime, your prior criminal record, and the likelihood that you will show up for the court date if you are released. There are already criteria in place for judges to determine these three things, and they are generally referred to as risk assessment tools. Judges use these tools to assign you a certain number of points based on the number of traits you have that are typical of people who don't show up to court or who commit crimes while on release. For example, being younger than 22 or having skipped court in the past are two risk markers that a judge would consider. Also, depending on the county that you knock that punk upside the head in, you might be released before or after your arraignment and you may be released by a judge or county law enforcement officials or you may end up staying in jail if law enforcement doesn't release you and you don't pay bail. But even if you are released, you may be charged a fee to pay for the cost of electronic monitoring if it is ordered by the court. The entire issue can be boiled down to this. The judge needs to decide whether releasing you before trial would be a public safety risk, i.e. would you commit another crime or knock another punk upside his head, or would you be likely to go fugitive and skip trial? That's what all of this boils down to. There are two ways people get released. One is by own recognizance. This means they basically promise to show up to court and the judge believes them. The other is by bail. You know what bail is, don't you? You've seen it on TV, right? Or maybe in your real life? For the uninitiated, let's briefly explain bail. A judge will charge you a deposit, essentially. If you show up to court, you get your money back. If you don't show up, they keep your money. How do you pay bail? If you're a baller, you just give the court a certain amount of money or personal property to satisfy the bail. If you're everyone else, you use a bail agent. A bail agent charges you a non-refundable fee, typically no more than 10% of your bail amount, and the bail agent promises to pay the court the full amount if your bonehead itself doesn't show up to court. Bail agents use insurance companies to cover the risk. When you use a bail agent, you don't have to put up the full amount the court requires, however, you lose that fee money. Moreover, there are set fees in each county for each crime. For example, in Los Angeles County, the bail for forgery is $20,000. For arson of a home, it's $250,000. The amount for knocking a punk upside his head would most likely be less. Side note, the legislative analyst makes us aware of this dirty little secret. Bail is rarely paid in actuality when a person fails to appear in court. That's because it often doesn't have to be paid if law enforcement or bounty hunters catch you within 180 days or due to legal technicalities, but when it is paid, counties and cities receive the bail money. Moreover, Bail agents are regulated by the state, and thus legal complaints can be filed against them and they can be prosecuted. Part of the bail fees go to regulate the state's 2,500 or so licensed bail agents. In 2018, the bail industry issued about $6 million in bail bonds and collected about $560 million in bail bond fees, which resulted in about $13 million in taxes paid to the state that year. Long story short, here's why we're here today. In 2018, the legislature and the governor passed a law, SB 10, that would eliminate the use of cash bail in California, instead opting for a system where judges decide whether a person is a flight risk or not. However, there was a referendum, which means that some folks said, hold it right there, Sacramento. Let's put this bad boy on the ballot and let the people vote on this. When that happens, the law cannot go into effect unless we vote it into effect. 
And here we are, my felonious friends. We have gathered here today to decide whether we want to keep the cash bail system or eliminate that and let judges decide who should roam free before trial. This law aims to eliminate cash bail, create a new process for release before arraignment, and change the process for release at arraignment. What does it do? It requires automatic release for most misdemeanor crimes. So if you're in jail for a misdemeanor, such as knocking some punk upside his head, you must be automatically released within 12 hours of being jailed. But stop right there, Mr. Domestic Violator. You can sit back down because this wouldn't apply to people jailed for domestic violence or to people who have failed to appear in court more than two times in the past year. It creates standards for the release of people charged with felonies and misdemeanors that are disqualified for automatic release. So if you're in jail for a felony or an ineligible misdemeanor, then certain information would be collected from you that would help law enforcement determine your likelihood of committing another crime upon release or your likelihood to not show up to trial. If you are found to be low risk, you would be released. If you are found to be medium risk, you may still be released depending on the rules of your particular court. The following people would remain in jail. High risk people, some medium risk people, and people charged with certain severe felonies like murder or arson. Some medium risk people may be released on conditions. For example, they may require you to submit to electronic monitoring if you are released. Low risk people could not be made to do this. Finally, assessment and release of jailed people would have to be completed no later than 36 hours from a person being placed in jail. Trial courts would be responsible for doing all this assessing of jailed individuals. While these courts would generally release people on own recognizance or the promise to attend trial, district attorneys could request that they be held in jail if there is justifiable reason for that. And our Prop 25 trivia question is, what amount was the highest bail set in U.S. history? The answer to that after these messages. Fiscal impact. The fiscal impact of Prop 25 would be increased state and local costs, possibly in the mid hundreds of millions of dollars annually, for a new process for releasing people from jail prior to trial. This measure would increase the workload for state trial courts, district attorneys, and public defenders, as well as add additional supervision costs for people out on what used to be bail. It is unclear whether some of the increased state costs would be offset by local funds currently spent on this type of workload. There would be decreased county jail costs, possibly in the high tens of millions of dollars annually, as more people would be released. The state would also lose that $13 million in taxes paid by the bail bond industry, which would now not be an industry anymore. The legislative analyst makes this bizarre note that there would be a possibility that there would be increased tax revenue if people don't have to pay bail, but instead use that money to purchase taxable goods. I'm not sure if that's worth considering, but okay. So you think you are not going to donate to the Daryl Johnson show, huh? Well, you just wait until I get off on bail. When the judge gives my bail, I will find you at work, at the hair salon, in the Porto body. Just as soon as I get the list from PayPal of all the people who didn't donate. From Yes on Prop 25. Now is the time to replace California's money bail system with one based on safety and fairness. Money bail is unfair. Under the current money bail system, if you can afford to pay bail, you go free until your trial. If you can't afford bail, you must stay in jail. So the rich can go free even when accused of serious violent crimes, while the poor stay in jail when innocent or accused of low-level non-violent offenses. Money bail doesn't make us safer, and it results in gross injustice. Just one example, senior citizen Kenneth Humphrey was accused of stealing $5 and a bottle of cologne. He was forced to wait in jail nearly a year before his court date, not because he was dangerous, but because he couldn't pay bail. A California appellate court ruled Mr. Humphrey was imprisoned solely due to poverty. Unfortunately, there are thousands of these stories. Innocent people suffer. The current system forces innocent people to plead guilty if they can't afford a non-refundable bail fee, but also can't afford to stay in jail and lose their jobs and homes while awaiting trial. Money bail is unsafe. Proposition 25 means decisions will be based on risk to our safety, not a person's ability to pay. Judges will determine whether a person poses a risk of committing new crimes or fleeing when deciding who is held pre-trial. 
Decisions won't be made based on the size of a person's wallet. Proposition 25 makes our community safer by ensuring jail space is reserved for those who are actually dangerous and shouldn't be released instead of the poor. Money bail is costly. Proposition 25 will save taxpayers tens of millions of dollars a year. Under the current system, approximately 46,000 Californians await trial or sentencing in local jails because they can't afford bail, costing taxpayers $5 million every day. Wowzers! The bail industry is predatory. It's a $2 billion for-profit industry led by predatory bail bond insurance corporations that get rich off the poor including Bankers Insurance Company and Lexington National Insurance Corporation, who are spending their billions to protect their profits and preserve a broken, discriminatory system. They oppose Proposition 25 out of greed. Proposition 25 ends an unjust system that profiteers off working people, which is why the money bail industry is spending millions to fight this measure. Prop 25 replaces money bail with a system where judges make determinations based on safety. Computer algorithms don't make the decisions, judges do. According to the Judicial Council of California, Proposition 25 will gather information and provide reports to aid judges in the decisions about whether a defendant is a risk to the public or likely to return to court if released before trial. Prop 25 also adds transparency and public review to eliminate bias and racial disparities. Prop 25 has nothing to do with Zero Bail, a temporary public health response to COVID-19. Money bail is a discriminatory and discredited system. Help us end it. Vote yes on Prop 25 for a safer, fairer, and less costly system. And here's the answer to our Prop 25 trivia question. What amount was the highest bail set in U.S. history? The answer? Three billion dollars. If you're at an election night prep party, the person closest to that amount without going over wins three points, the second closest wins two points, and anyone who guessed over $500 million gets one point. If you're playing alone, give yourself two points for any answer over $1 billion and one point for any answer over $100 million. And just for fun, here are some notable bail amounts. Bernie Madoff, $10 million. Suge Knight, $25 million. And our guest of honor, Robert Durst, $3 billion. From No on Prop 25. Written by Sacramento politicians, Prop 25 eliminates the right to bail for every Californian. California's justice system guarantees that people accused of nonviolent crime have the choice of securing their release by posting bail or by order of a judge. But Prop 25 replaces this right with an automated system of computer-based profiling based on mathematical algorithms administered by 58 different counties to decide who goes free and who stays behind bars pending trial. Read why civil rights leaders, law enforcement, victims' rights groups, and county officials all say no on Prop 25. Civil rights groups like the NAACP warn that Prop 25 is more biased against African Americans, Latinos, and other minorities and the poor and will create more biased outcomes against people of color and those from economically disadvantaged areas. Areas with higher concentrations of immigrants and low-income residents will also suffer. Computer models may be good for recommending songs and movies, but using these profiling methods to decide who gets released from jail or who gets a loan has been proven to hurt communities of color, says Alice Huffman, president of the California State Conference of the NAACP. Prop 25 makes communities less safe. California's experiment with zero bail during the coronavirus pandemic had disastrous effects, as many defendants were arrested released back on the streets and committed new crimes within hours, and then rearrested the same day. Prop 25 will make zero bail permanent, which is why law enforcement throughout the state oppose it. California's current justice system provides justice by ensuring people accused of a crime appear for trial and holds defendants accountable for their actions if they don't. Prop 25 makes it harder for police and sheriff's departments to do their jobs and destroys one of our community's best tools to make sure defendants appear in court. Prop 25 forces counties to create a new bureaucracy to determine who will and who will not get released from jail pending trial. This new state mandate will cost taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars to implement at a time when the state and county budgets are facing historic budget cuts due to the coronavirus and will force us to cut vital public services or raise taxes. 
Prop 25 replaces a bail system that works well at almost no cost to taxpayers with a new system that requires additional court hearings to overrule the computer's decisions, leading to even longer delays in our already overcrowded, backlogged justice system. And now, imagine a spouse, son, daughter, or close friend stuck in jail at the mercy of computers and the bureaucracy instead of having the immediate choice of getting out on bail or the ability to speak directly to a judge. Vote no on Prop 25. This is a tough one for me. Uh, the upside to cash bail, in my opinion, is that at least you have the option available to you and the choice is essentially in your hands, whereas in a Prop 25 scenario, the choice is all in the judge's hands and the algorithms, etc. But on the flip side, in a Prop 25 situation, at least I don't gotta pay nothing when I pop that punk upside his head. I can just go home and watch Netflix while I'm waiting for trial, unless the judge thinks I'm a risk. This is an unusual situation for me because I don't have strong opinions and I don't feel convinced that either option is substantially better than the other. The one thing that Cash Bail has going for it in my view is that it's tried and true and we know the outcome. The other option will be an experiment, but that's not a bad thing either. If we are dealing with a legitimately guilty person, I guess I don't mind cash bail, but the problem is both the innocent and the guilty will be stuck paying large fees to stay at home. And if you're innocent, that kind of sucks. I would like a system where the people found innocent are refunded bail fees, but that's not on the table. So in this situation, I'm going to refrain from taking a hard public stance. I'll most likely vote no, not because this is a bad proposition, but because I don't know what the right answer is. And so my default and uncertainty is status quo. I'm not recommending that philosophy. That's just where I am. One thing I may consider is just not voting on this one. If you vote yes on Prop 25, you are voting to outlaw bail in California and rely on judges to decide who is safe to release before trial. If you vote no on Prop 25, you are voting for California to continue with its current cash bail system. The Daryl Johnson Show takes no position on Prop 25.